Hey, I'm Molly Pesci, and this is Barnes & Noble Tagged. Mika Brzezinski of MSNBC's Morning Joe is known for her tough reporting and interviews. But today, the tables are turned, and I get to ask the questions about her new book, All Things at Once. Mika Brzezinski is no stranger to the high-stress world of politics and journalism. Her father, Zbigniew Brzezinski, was the national security advisor during the Carter administration. Mika is currently a co-anchor on the popular MSNBC show, Morning Joe, and she also reports for NBC Nightly News and appears on Weekend Today. On top of everything, she is married and a mother of two young girls. How does she do it? We are all about to find out when she joins us in the Barnes & Noble studio to tell us about her new book, All Things at Once. Mika Brzezinski, you've been tagged. Thank you so oh. much for being here. Thank you for having me, I, Molly. I'm a huge fan. I love Morning Joe, so I'm, I'm really thrilled to meet you. Oh, thanks a lot. So I want to just go, jump right in with, you are really the definition of busy. I mean, you're, you're, you do Morning Joe, you, you work on the nightly news, mm -hmm. you have two children. How did you find time to write a book? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, actually, what we what we brought on at the time that we uh, both got wonderful opportunities to write books, we also got a radio show for two hours a day. So it's three hours of TV, two hours of radio, and then we went home, each of us, to write our books. Wow. So ask our families how we yeah. survived that. <laughs> We're still standing. It seems, though, as I was reading the book, that you've really kept an incredible pace almost throughout your life, really starting when you were a child. Your father was national security advisor to President Carter. So you, you kind of live that life. Well, yes, and I've uh, worked with people who are always on the run or working toward a higher goal. And I think the fit with Morning Joe and the concept of this show is that we're working to elevate the conversation. Yeah. And it's really fun to be in the middle of that, and we're always working towards another goal with that conversation. And it kind of felt right to take a look back a little bit and also to just look at where women are today mm -hmm. in what, that conversation. I, and I love that the fact one of the big transitions to you becoming a big hit was was shredding the <laughs> Paris Hilton copy in the book. She she shreds tell the story. It was fun. Uh, I actually was still freelance at NBC and we were still sort of getting the show together and the newscast which came in the three minutes every hour was the one part of the show that was scripted mm -hmm. and somebody put Paris Hilton as the lead and I just ripped it up I said I'm not doing it and I thought to myself I've been fired <laughs> they can fire me again <laughs> and it felt so liberating it was like that woman in the commercial where she's like yes yes Yes, yes, with the shampoo. Yes, yes. That was me with the script. One of the things that I really loved in the book is you talk a lot about your children and being a mom, but you also talk about your mom. She's an incredible woman in the story. She's a sculptor, but she knew how to dress a deer. Yes. And I, I was very <laughs> impressed with she that. She could hack up a deer, and she still can. <laughs> believe me, I'm sure she's doing because, that right now. Because, you know, now. the impression of people of your family would be that you all are this incredible high society. You Ivy know, that League. You, Ivy League. And then Queen. And, yeah, yeah. No. Not really. <laughs> my brothers, I think, made it into, I, I had a hard time getting into college, but uh, I'll tell you, we are like the Polish hillbillies came to Washington. <laughs> and it was kind of neat to unveil a little bit, yeah. you know, because the, the TV jobs are so glamorous. Mm -hmm. And you think, ever, the women, especially on TV, they look like they have it all together. It is my job here to tell you today that I do not. Mm -hmm. And the only example that I live by is my mother's. And she actually did become a central character in the book, and I didn't plan for that. Mm -hmm. But I started thinking about what is the message of this book, and I have to tell you, I realized it was her message. And that is not to lose a sense of who you are, even if that person doesn't fit in. And she definitely was a transplant to Washington <laughs> and, was, and never made an attempt to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I handed to her for that. Mika, I love the cover of your book because, you. because you know, you are this glamorous newscaster and yet you, you've got your little shirt on and your jeans. Tell, tell me well, about actually, that. Well, actually, there's a story behind that because um, we went to the book shoot and they had this fancy place all white and we had all these fancy outfits and I had makeup and hair and I was looking very glamorous. Ooh. And, but I wasn't comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to sort of do different <laughs> things that made it look glamorous, and I, I, it wasn't working. I just, I, this was supposed to express who I am, and the book mm -hmm. is all about what the real story is. Mm -hmm. And that shirt, I actually, I actually slept in the night before. <laughs> 
um, because I sometimes sleep in my clothes because I get up so early. I just want to get up and walk out of the house. Yes, I'm like yes. a kid going to camp. <laughs> and um, I wore that to the shoot so I didn't mess up my nice clothes. And I took it off and I put it on the floor. At one point, I was stepping on it as we were putting on the glamorous clothes. And actually, I get handed to my publisher. Um, Kristen Powers said, you want to put that on? And she pointed at the shirt on the floor all crumpled up in a ball. <laughs> and I said, yes! <laughs> and I put it on and it just felt like me. Yeah. And it was much easier to pose for the cover of your book feeling like yourself. Well, the book is fantastic. It's called All Things at Once. I'm telling you, it is a great book for any <laughs> mom that has a job. I mean, it, you really, you're wonderful, you're honest. And You'll feel better about yourself yeah. because <laughs> no one can do it as badly as me. <laughs> no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Here's a tagged close-up, a beautiful collection of photos that will spice up any of your future travels. Food Journeys of a Lifetime from National Geographic is the latest title of our popular series of illustrated travel gift books. It is a fabulous itinerary of food, dishes, markets, and restaurants worth traveling far and wide to savor. On the menu is the best of the best from all over the globe. You'll sample the sophisticated dishes of fabled chefs and five-star restaurants, of course. But you'll also discover the simpler pleasures of the side street cafes that cater to local people and the classic specialties that give each region a distinctive flavor. Hundreds of appetizers, full-color illustrations, evoke the extraordinary range of tastes and cooking techniques. A wide selection of recipes invites you to create as well as consume. In addition, detailed practical travel information provides all the ingredients you'll need to cook up a truly delicious experience for even the most demanding of traveling gourmets. And that's my tag close-up. Every week, we take a look at the new offerings in the world of books, movies, and music. This week, we've got thrillers, swans, songs from vampires, and something out of this world. Ready for takeoff? Here are my top tags for this week. Following the planet number five is The First Rule by best-selling author Robert Crace. P.I. Joe Pike first appeared in the thriller The Watchman and is back. And this time he's trying to clear the name of an old buddy who's been murdered. Organized crime and disorderly conduct fuel this thriller. Showing its bangs at number four is Vampire Weekend's latest release, Contra. It's a new collection of songs with their unique mix of preppy indie rock and Afro-pop-inspired melodies. Stealing a spot at number three is The Swan Thieves, from best-selling author Elizabeth Kostova. Her new novel travels from American cities to the coast of Normandy, from young love to last love, a story of obsession, history's losses, and the power of art to preserve human hope. Going for the gold at number two is Treasure Hunt, John Lesquois follows up his bestseller, The Hunt, with another novel starring detective Wyatt Hunt. This time, the tightly plotted thriller is set against the glamorous San Francisco charity circuit. Shooting for the stars at number one is Moon, out on DVD and Blu-ray. In this psychological sci-fi film, astronaut Sam Bell, played by Sam Rockwell, has been on a three-year solo mission on the moon extracting precious gases. but. Now, it seems dirty dealings put his mission and life in jeopardy. And those are my top tags for this week. We can't really help you do all things at once, but we can help you find the very best books to read on Barnes & Noble Tag. Thanks for watching.